Hi, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis. I was just speaking with an autistic woman and she was asking for some explanation about why I sometimes ask about physical reactions, especially when there's a clear emotion happening or um, when we're trying to, to talk about what she wants versus what she thinks she wants, trying to get herself to do things um, versus like, what do I actually want in this situation? And so a lot of what I end up doing with clients is essentially learning to build up a sense of self-trust, a, a sense of knowing what is right for you and what's not okay for you. Because a lot of us have been conditioned, often unintentionally, but still very heavily, to deny aspects of our own experience. And when we start to get in touch with our physical reactions towards things, we start to gain information about what we really feel about things, what we really think about things. Because our body reactions, our nervous systems have had years and years and decades of experiences reacting to things. And we can ignore those, we can deny them, we can numb them, we can pretend they don't exist, we can do all sorts of things to discount them, but they're still there. Um, or they can be if you start to get in touch with them, they will come back. But the thing is, is that whether we are aware of what's going on or not, our body will react entirely truthfully to a situation. If you don't like something, it will react like, I don't like this. Often that appears as a tightness of muscles, tension, um, unpleasant tingling, unpleasant electricity, clenching, pain, all sorts of, of negative types of contraction reactions are very common. Pain reactions are very common. Um, bracing reactions are very common. But those are all your body signals of no, or I don't like this, or this is not okay for me. Um, and it could be about a, a person, a place, a situation, a particular bit in the sensory environment. But as you start to get in touch with those, and you can get in touch with them simply by asking, what am I noticing in my body right now? Um, but as you start to get in touch with those, you can start to tap into that information and your body will give you more and more of that information. But it's not over, or at least it doesn't have to be as you get used to this. It, it, as you start to learn how to use it usefully, it's not as overwhelming as just having all of the sensations, but having no idea what to do with it or not being able to do anything useful with it. There's the other half of the body sensations though, are yes signals. Very common yes signals are any kind of opening, like a feeling like your chest is opening or relief or burden off your shoulder kind of feelings. Um, it can be a pleasant tingling or a pleasant electricity. It can be the muscles relaxing. It can be um, a feeling of lightness or, or excitement. Any of these kinds of feelings, a feeling of a softening is common as well. Any of those are yes signals from bodies, or at least they're very common yes signals. Um, it's good to get to know your own. That's the whole point of asking these questions is, is building up this, this database essentially of, um, you have the database, you have decades of information stored in your body about what's okay and what's not. It's learning how to read the database. It's learning how to access the database. So that's why I ask these questions. And it's, it's not a lot. I don't dwell on the body stuff extensively, but just asking the question every now and then, especially when I notice a particular emotional reaction, starts to tie in the brain very subtly and very non-overwhelmingly that there, hey, there's an emotion, there's a physical reaction, and there's a thought. And it's this triad, it's this triangle of emotion, physical sensation and thought that they always go to bed to go go together. There's always the the three. We may not pay attention to all three of those, but as we start to do that, we connect them 
and we can start when we notice one of them we can look for what's the information from the other two and sometimes we'll notice the feeling the emotion feeling more sometimes we'll notice the physical feeling the sen physical sensation more sometimes we'll notice the thought that'll be the, the more dominant one for a lot of autistics this tends to be the first one we go to but we can start to connect these simply by asking the question with curiosity with no judgment just like what's the physical sensation there or what's the emotion there or when you notice one of those what's the thought underlying it and so it can be useful to build that up and those connections will start to build up on their own as you ask these questions off and on once in a while in your normal course of life or when talking to a life coach like me okay so i hope that that helps explain a little bit about what i'm doing and how how this can work how you can start to to build these connections oh by the way i was talking about building self-trust at the beginning so how this ties into self-trust just very briefly is when you have access to this database of information and you start to notice here's my no signal here's my yes signal you can use those when you're trying to make decisions about should i go to this place how do i feel about that like when you imagine actually going to the place not just thinking about the pros and cons about it but imagine yourself going there what are the physical sensations that come up what are the emotional reactions and start asking like okay so what is it about it that I'm that I, that is causing that reaction is it the whole thing that's not really useful as a data point but is it the people that are there is it a single person who might be there is it the environment like the, the sensory experience is is just overwhelming at that type of place is it a particular thing or many things, but you can learn to narrow it down. But as you get better and better at that, and you, as you can narrow it down, which will happen with practice and experience, um, you can make better and better decisions about what's good for you. And as you make better decisions, and as you make decisions and it turns out well, more and more often, that builds self-trust from a place of actual experience of, I did this, I made this decision, and it turned out well. This was the right choice for me. That's evidence that you can do it. And as that builds up, it builds self-trust very naturally. Okay, so that's how that all ties in. Um, all right. Hope this was useful. There are more videos like this if you're interested in my channel. Um, and I will wish you a neuro-wonderful day. Take care.